All right. If the previous section didn't blow your mind, maybe section 1.9, this one might very well do. Let's look at 1 divided by 1 minus x. This polynomial, the numerator, is just 1 divided by that beast, the linear term on the bottom. Very strange. All right, so it's in the x1 machine, so let's draw it. So let's draw what the problem is here. So I've got a whole bunch of boxes in an x1 machine that go as far as I need to the left. Um, it's 1. Not very exciting, it looks like just one dot in the one's place. And I'm divided by one minus x, one minus x. What does that look like? It looks like a, uh, an anti-x and an actual one. Anti dot dot. So my job is to find this pattern in this structure up here, which doesn't seem to exist right now. However, we learned last time, there's a life lesson to be had. Something you want in life, make it happen. I would love anti dot to go over this dot right here. That's exactly the pattern I want. Would it be grand to have an anti dot? Make it happen. But deal with the consequences, have to have a dot to balance it. But at least I now have the anti-dot dot version I want at the ones level. But now I've got this dot up here. Wouldn't it be grand if there's an anti-dot here to balance it in the pattern exactly as I want it? Well, yes, let's just make it happen. And there's another anti-dot dot at the x level. But there's a dot left over. Well, let's do it again. I want an anti-dot there. Consequence, I can see another one at the x squared level. Wouldn't it be nice if there's an anti-dot here to balance that solid dot I've just created? You bet. Let's make it happen. Do, 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 do. And I seem to be in a lovely infinite process right now with a whole bunch of uh, patterns like this going on forever. So what's it saying? All right, it's saying that when I actually take the number one and divide it by one minus x, I'm getting, it's hard to know where to go from the left, I'm getting one x, uh, sorry, one one, and one x, and one x squared, and one x cubed, and one x to the fourth, and so on, and so on, and so on forever. So I drew dot 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 to mean forever. Voila. I've now got what's called the geometric series formula in mathematics, which is usually studied in a pre-calculus class or maybe in a calculus class. And there it is, popping out from nothing more than grade 5 arithmetic in dots and boxes. Really I'm doing an X1 machine, just not telling me what X is in my head. And voila, look at this beautiful structure that's just come out in this amazingly conceptually beautiful, elegant, simple way. Whoa. In fact, uh, you can play with this. Uh, if you look at the material that's under this uh, video on the screen, just scroll down past the video, people don't realize there's text down there. Um, you can work through some stuff and maybe play with things like uh, what's one divided by one plus x. I bet you can do that one now pretty darn easily. Or if you like the Fibonacci numbers, try this one. One divided by one minus x minus x squared. Now that one's going to be interesting. It's going to seem messy at first, but keep going. Get to you know, the x to the fourth or x to the fifth boxes, and you'll start to see some wonderful structure going on. And when you see that structure, you'll know why I just called it what I just called it. Kind of cool, really cool. So there we are. We are now in sort of pre-calculus land as well. Um, I guess people might call these things generating functions in the research world. So actually, maybe in the research world, where are we? We're doing cool stuff. Fabulous, fabulous, fun things. And uh, all it is is just dots and boxes at the very basic level. Gotta love it. All right, thanks.